Hi, Alisa. Hey there, how's it going? All right, good. Are they the only people who actually show up on time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think we have an agenda yet. Like, I was looking at the agenda and just, like, copy-pasted everything over for, uh... <laughs> oh, well, we'll see what happens. We always have something to talk about. Thanks for your welcome note, by the way. Um, I have, of course, heard about you uh, on GitHub <laughs> and from Josh. I was just looking forward uh, towards an opportunity to meet you in person. Oh yeah, I would again. I would love like basically when you're when you're through your like Nugler wave of meetings, meetings like grab right. some time in my calendar. Will do. Sure. Basically, a Google meeting at this point. <laughs> Met Harvey. Mark is. I haven't met Mark. Hi, Mark. I'm Hello. 30 and I've joined the EPT team and Envoy platform team uh, recently. Cool. Welcome. All right. Yeah, uh, Curdy, uh, Ma we, we, work, we work closely with Mark. He's our main representative from the GRPC uh, world. And we are no longer just Googlers. I'm hey, let me fix. Have we done intros to Matt Harvey? I don't know who Kirchie's met. Um, yeah, I was just checking. I, I was making sure that I was not muted. Can you hear me? Yeah, I have to go back to using a Google device for Zoom, which is always tricky. Um, uh, Matt, I want you to meet uh, Curdy. He uh, started yesterday as the new manager of our Envoy platform team. Hi, Matt. Welcome. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. Great. Uh, it's a pleasure seeing you. Uh, I've, I've gone through your video tutorials, Harvey's video tutorials, just to know more about man, uh, more about the Envoy and still Sort of ramping up um, on it. Great. Well, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Joe, sure, we'll reach out. I'm sure that whiteboard behind you will fill up quickly. Yes, that's the intent. Yeah. All right. Matt, I'm, I'm disoriented not seeing you in a room with a really tall ceiling. I'm uh, in my house in Boise right now, where I'm in the guest bedroom for other reasons so yes i will be back in a room at the tall ceiling soon <laughs> okay more, excellent i'm looking once, forward to it <laughs> once more things are fixed another round of house drama or expected and known things um it's it's just like never ending the the room that i was going to use as an office uh it turns out that it gets to like 100 degrees in there because the the air condition doesn't it just doesn't work in that space so i need to get a separate unit for that room uh, which is happening this week so then i'll be back in there So I think this is mostly Google and maintainers. I don't think we had anything in the agenda. I don't know if there are things we want to talk about. Um, contrib? Sorry, what? Contrib? Yeah, the we contrib can. directory. Yeah, we yes. can talk about that. And I guess extension, extension sponsorship and all of those things. Um, sure, yeah. Did you Did you want to open the conversation there? Uh, yes, I'd like to open the conversation. I, we have a number of filters posted for review. Some are smaller than others. Some are very big. Uh, some of them were maybe more general use case, like this uh, secure exchange, uh, you know, something or other. The other one were very, I feel like, a, more of a niche filters, which was for this uh, protocol for some telco. Uh, for some wireless telco things. Uh, but I think the problem is that uh, we, it, at least it feels like we don't have enough capacity at, at this at this point 
to sponsor it from from the maintainers perspective just not enough maintainers uh, right now i am working on trying to get at least two more people to the maintainer status from the google side but it will still take some time so I'm not but i think convinced you know, the problem is maintainers i think it's also a thing of interest i mean i think we have like four new maintainers who don't own swaths of the code base i just think that if the maintainers don't have an interest in the area of code they're not going to volunteer to own it and like right it's like when, you know, when i look at some of these prs it's like throw over the wall style like someone's developed a very very large piece of code, body of code like ten thousand lines or something like that think over all to wasm and it's like Hey, now that someone is interested in becoming the uh, well, the, the sponsor for this extension, and that's pretty hard if you're not organizationally aligned to sort of get excited about that, unless it's extremely interesting or well written in code or you know something in, the, in, the, in your domain, right? So, I, I, I kind of feel there's also like a process aspect of of building that interest, right? Yeah. So, and I, I actually think that we have a bunch of existing extensions that need to get moved into Contrib, right? Like there's sure. quite a few of them, MySQL, Kafka, like there's lots of them that either don't have strong ownership or I know are not really widely used in production. Um, so I think the solution is well known. I mean, what I'd like to do is I basically want to make a Contrib directory I think we need to run CI on that directory, but I think we can cut it quite a bit. So for example, we don't run sanitizers. We probably wouldn't run coverage. Maybe we'd run coverage just to, if people want to know like what, what their current coverage is. We wouldn't run OSX. We wouldn't run all of the slow things. We'd run one build basically just to make sure it compiles. And, and then there'd be no security posture. It'd be clearly marked in the documentation. And then we'd have a list basically of things that would be required. If people want to move it from contrib over to the normal release. And then the other thing, and I think this is the thing that would really encourage people to care about it, is I think we would split the images. So basically we would do an Envoy normal core and then an Envoy kitchen sink Docker image. And the kitchen sink, that might be the one compiled job that actually runs is just doing the release build over the contrib extensions. And then we would do a second image that basically has the kitchen sink and people would be able to use that image if they want those contrib extensions. I don't know if so, it's easy to do, but I do think it would be worth running at least nightly builds with sanitizers and stuff, because if nothing else, I feel like it, it is it is worth having some standard of code. And again, if they if they break, we can disable things and just mark it as, you know, let people know. Yeah, I like we can, um, I mean, I'm not opposed to doing that. It's more just someone has to do the legwork to make that happen on a nightly <laughs> basis. And I'm concerned realistically, just knowing the world that if we make it nightly and it's not blocking, who's gonna fix it, right? It's like, I mean, like we'll have to build the infrastructure to get notified of failures, make sure it's not a flake and then turn it off and tell someone who probably doesn't care. So I, I'm just, it's like, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just skeptical that that the effort's gonna be worthwhile, so. Hmm. So I'm, I'm willing to go and do some of this work because it's becoming a major problem. Um, so I'm happy to go and start doing some of the build changes or I can work with Ryan to make that happen. I think what's going to be controversial and it's probably going to piss some people off, but I'm willing to fight that battle is that I'm going to audit the current extensions and basically just decide on the ones that I think should be moved to contrib. And I would say anything that doesn't have owners is, well, is, is a clear bar and people could step up. It's a combination of not having owners and also me just knowing that either the owners are not responsive or it's not widely used or yep. something, right? And there's, you know, I mean, I don't think we have a ton of those cases, but there are definitely some. And I think that's something that we should do. Now, the the only other point that I would make where this is coming to, to a head is that um, like, for example, I forget this SGX, whatever extension thing. I mean, this is a Google initiative that's being pushed. Like I, like I talked to the Pinterest people. So I do think there's a, there's a middle ground here, right? Where, I mean, I do feel like if someone, I'm, I don't even mean to single out Google here. I'm talking like some company that has a vested interest in seeing some code, <laughs> right? Like go into Envoy. 
whether they're maintainers or not, they should probably put up some resources to making that code work, right? So like from that particular extension standpoint, I think one option, which is would be fine with me personally, is if if that's an initiative that's being pushed by a company, say Google, and there's similar cases from Amazon or whatever, we can get people that we're confident will do the work either on Pinterest or Google side, and then you can have a maintainer basically rubber stamp it. And that's and that's fine with me because that's just the way that it works, right? It's like if you a maintainer trust that these people are gonna do the work, then I don't really see the problem with just rubber stamping it. So in that okay. particular case, and like we can write that down. I mean, it's like, I think that's a fine policy that we can have where if we have some chain of trust and we trust the people that are gonna write the extension, even if they're not maintainers and you wanna rubber stamp it, I don't really see a problem with that. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, what do you mean by rubber stamp that? So that I guess there's different levels of trust. So I trust, for example, certain folks get the business logic right of, I don't know, something like job verification or something like that. Like that's not something I'm going to spend a lot of time doing. But I'm still going to make sure they write code which is envoy esque, right? I, I'm, I'm talking like do some skimming, make sure there's nothing crazy going on, and like you know some level of trust that they're not going to. I don't know, sneak in something that you're going to rubber stamp and like merge that's going to cause some major security problem, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I there's no there's no it's perfect sure solution there. Alpha untrusted, like you know, yeah. if we if we mark it as an untrusted extension, as long as it's not breaking and they're using a production, right? You know, and, and there's not obvious exploits, it's marked as untrusted. So I I'm I'm mostly bringing this up because I know that this is going to become a problem because what's going to happen is that no one cares about contrib, right? Because if we take all the contrib filters and we bundle them into the same Docker image, no one cares whether they're in contrib and they have sanitizers or anything else, right? It's like they've got the code and they can run it. When people will start caring is that if there's Envoy and then there's Envoy Kitchen Sink and people are gonna be asking, well, why isn't my extension in Envoy? Why isn't it in Kitchen Sink, right? And then or, and then that's gonna become political and somewhat dramatic. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I think saying, again, like we, we've had a pretty clear policy of maintainer sponsorship and it's like, get, get a maintainer, right? Am- yeah. You know, Amazon can do that. Google can do that. Donate some resources. Totally <laughs> agree. All I'm, all I'm saying is that I think there's a gray area where Google has a bunch of current maintainers. All I'm suggesting is that I'm personally okay with the situation in which an existing maintainer, there's a chain of trust, and that maintainer trusts X people to go do the work, and they're basically going to rubber stamp it. Like, I yeah, think yeah, that's sure, just sure. the world that we have to live in. So if of the bunch of Google maintainers, if, for example, you didn't want this extension to wind up in the kitchen sink build because that's going to piss people off, then you should figure yeah. out how to sponsor it, even if that's just a rubber stamp situation. Got it, got it, got it. Fair. Yeah. Um, actually, one so question think- on um, on the politics and people getting pissed. How do we decide what goes into contrib? Because I don't think we want to take every random thing. Like... I feel like if there's a standard around it and, and it passes the sniff test for generally useful, fine. But I feel like there's also going to be a lot of like total crap dumped in there. And, and we, we should still have a bar for that or should we not have a bar for that? Or I don't know. Are- this is, the, I, I, I honestly don't know the answer because if you, the only parallel that I can come up with at the current time is if you look at how the Linux kernel handles drivers, right? And the way that the Linux kernel handles drivers, it is literally a dumping ground. <laughs> And, you know, half of those things, as far as I know, don't even compile because okay. it's, it's just like, a, and I'm not saying we should do that. I'm just saying like, that's an extreme case of where they basically just say, you have a driver, you can throw it in the code base and, you know, maybe it works or maybe it doesn't. And, you know, they don't really have CI for the Linux kernel. So it's like a bunch of that stuff doesn't even compile, but so we're going to have to figure out what the right bar is and i'm not suggesting that we go as far as linux does i think everything should at least compile um but at a certain point given ci resources and if we're turning off sanitizers osx windows like basically all of the stuff that we know take a lot of time um and it's just turned on for this one build just to make sure that it compiles and it goes into some random kitchen sink image 
I don't know that I really care that much. So, I mean, it's like, I, I'm not sure that it's worth pushing back. And then okay. I think the bar to get out of contrib is that it has to be sponsored. Like all of the things that we do today, documentation, sanitizers, coverage, like it all has to pass. Um, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, my, my one concern with that one, and and again, you know, we can figure it out as we go along is, I, I worry that that's gonna that, that cause the WASM issue where again, people write giant extensions and, and even if they add a whole bunch of tests, it's going to be like the nightmare of reviewing the code as it's pulled in. Um, we can deal with that as, as it happens, but I think, I, I wonder if we should, again, if people think that they're gonna want it in main really discourage contrib to to main repo. Yeah, I think, I think we could write it up and say that there's a direct, you don't have to go to contrib first. Like there's a direct path to getting it into the main repo with sponsorship and all of the maintainer you know, um, checking and all of the code coverage and the sanitizers and all of that and documentation. Um, but honestly, in my opinion, and this, and, and this is a hard line and this will also not be popular, WASM should go and contrib because it doesn't have documentation. And from my perspective, like anything that doesn't have documentation should not be in the main repo. Yeah, um, let me follow up with you on offline on that one. I think I can try and make sure that documentation lands in time for this. We, yeah, and, and possibly we can use that as a forcing function uh, because obviously Google cares a lot about WASM. So. Yeah, yeah. I understand that that is a statement no, no, I, that's going to cause a lot of problems. I'm just suggesting that if we are going to have rules and we're going to try to hold to those rules, uh, yeah. I would recommend that documentation is a requirement for being in the main repo, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Matt. Um, I, I also think like we could also maybe sweeten the deal a bit by saying it'll be easier to find maintainers who will sponsor your extension if you incrementally work with them while during development and review. If you dump, and then you can quite explicitly, if you dump a huge extension in your country and then expect a path to main, that's going to be a much bigger step function. And uh, uh, the, the incentives should hopefully drive folks towards um, Go, if that target is main, go to main first. And yeah. That's all. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I, I also, I think it, it makes sense to use the sort of a chain of trust approach as well to sponsorship because i think my my understanding before that the sponsoring maintainer has to somewhat be familiar with what's actually being contributed there which may be quite a high bar for you know for some of these things because that will require somebody to spend a lot of time learning what is what is sxg you know how does it work and um so I think maybe the chain of trust is a better approach and more scalable in this case. Yeah, I agree with that. Does the situation with WASM change if it winds up being primarily an out of process thing and all we're hooking in is like an RPC connection to it? Are you saying I get, are you saying that is what WASM is or no? I so I don't understand the question. Well um like I feel like in the case of like the our first attempts with WASM, it was this gigantic monolith of code that got linked into Envoy and had to be deeply trusted. Whereas uh, an alternative approach where you do things out of process, now you have the thing being linked into Envoy is much thinner. Well, we, I mean, we have XProp, which is essentially the generalization of that. So I guess the right. question which situations is XProp falling short there and that we would need something different? Oh, I wasn't claiming it was. I was just wondering, like, oh, I see. So the the thesis is that if, if something is out of process and we're linking with XProc, it doesn't really even need to be in contrib. It doesn't need to be in anything. Right. Exactly. It's just a separate repo and you can optionally compile that in its own world. Yes. And and link it in with a with a with a config. 
But I can imagine that folks would still want it and contrib. You know, if someone starts doing a WebSocket extension, you know, they're going to want to share it and have other people working on it and bug fixing and whatnot. So it wouldn't be necessary, but it would still potentially be helpful. Well, I think this sounds like a good start. So thanks, Jan, for kicking off the conversation and and to Matt yeah. um, and for being willing to. I and I'm, I'm supportive of, uh, I, I like the idea that documentation is a good minimum threshold. I think I, I agree with that. I don't think that's controversial. Cool. Do we have anything else we want to chat about? Done once, done twice, see you in two weeks. See you. Is anyone still there?